what is going on everyone welcome back to another youtube video so we're kind of in a weird situation during this time of recording where basically there's about to be new cpus that are dropping here around november october september sort of time and there's gonna be a lot of things that are changing whenever these new cpus come out but we're still gonna make this video just to basically help the people that are going through a buying phase of building a pc during the summer of june 30th 2024 basically going over what the best pc parts are right now as of this time and what makes the most sense and what is the best bang for your buck so let's get started with all of this so all of this is from my discord server if you go to my discord server and go to the pc hardware channel you will find all of this information and more regarding hardware and just some recommendations i have for general things other than just pcs so yeah but the first build that we're going to look at is the amd 7800 x3d build which is basically a very very cheap build where you literally just get all the stuff and whatever game you throw at it it will run it constantly at a crazy amount of fps for literally under a thousand dollars and the main reason why you would want to get this is because a lot of people are playing games like fortnite valorant etc and they want they want super high frame rates but they don't want to break their bank balance so what they can do is just buy this build for under a thousand and then just use the old graphics card from their old pc and plug it into this bad boy they'll get whatever fps they want in those two games now other games like call of duty you might want to get a 4070 super or a 4070 ti super both of those cards are pretty good for that game however anything below that like the 4060s and stuff like that i would say like completely avoid those unless you really really have to get those cards just because the 4060s are kind of just 3060 ti performance they're exactly the same performance as a 3060 ti so if you're paying for more for a 4060 compared to a 3060 you're just losing money on that so yeah i would recommend pairing this with a 4070 super or a 4070 ti super if you really need a graphics card but if you have an old one like a 2080 super or a 2070 just throw it into this you'll run fortnite valorant whatever game that you usually play on a daily basis you'll run it completely fine on this pc especially fortnite i mean i've seen guys run 800 fps in the actual battle royale map so that just gives you an idea of how much performance is actually packed into this build and some people might look at the cpu cooler and be like okay why is it so cheap why is at $36. This cooler, if you guys haven't already seen it in any of my videos or in any of my builds, basically it's the best budget cooler. It's basically an Noctua an HD15 for literally a fraction of the price. It does the exact same function. And the 7800X3D does not need liquid cooling at all. It does not need it. It pulls like max 80 watts whenever you're gaming. So it's not a power hungry CPU and it doesn't overheat. It doesn't have overheating issues. It's not like the Intel i7s or i9s that really need a liquid with cooler for them to excel so honestly like again guys like if you're looking for a new build and you don't have that much to work around with in terms of budget do not go for anything other than this this build right here is basically the go-to right now like there is no point of going for the ryzen 5 7600x or 7700x there's just no point just get the x3d you'll be fine for literally like a couple of years regarding games maybe you'll have to upgrade the graphics card but everything else will still be solid for a couple of years like five to four around there again this will last you for a very long time especially if you're, the games you're playing are just fortnite valorant and those games are popular nowadays now let's move on to basically the more of an enthusiast build basically this is a build for people that just want to go intel just because they prefer intel over amd not necessarily just because it performs better but just because they like intel i would say intel and amd in terms of fps you are going to get very similar performance however on intel you are going to to get better performance in my opinion if you tune everything out of the box so if you tune the cpu if you tune especially the ram intel whenever you get good ram sticks and tune them to the best of your abilities you'll get a huge amount of performance and you'll get lower latency in general now i don't really know how that compares to the amd side of things i just know amd is more of a plug and play option where basically you just plug everything up turn on expo and bios play your games at 360 fps or whatever frame rate you want and you're chilling for intel it's more of a process that you have to go through where you have to do some bio settings you have to do some tuning with the ram sticks to make sure they're not high latency out of the box but yeah so this is basically going to be an intel complete build this is included with the 4070 super and this build i mean same thing with the 7800 x3d whatever you throw at this build you'll get whatever fps you want so what the lga tr contact frame is it's basically just the contact plate for lga socket basically these cpus if you don't get this contact plate they bend whenever you install them into the motherboard so the cooler the cpu cooler 
doesn't make good contact with it. So you need the contact plate. It lowers your temperatures by like 10, 15 degrees. So that's a must on these CPUs, 1400K, 1300K, any of these CPUs, you, you definitely need the contact plate. So that's included in here. It's on Amazon. Just search up Intel LGA contact plate. You'll find it there. So you'll see it with this. You'll just plug this in with the CPU and then screw on the cooler. And the reason why it's an ITX motherboard is just because you cannot get an ATX motherboard right now that can do 7,600 on XMP. Now you are able to do that, but that requires a lot of manual tuning and people just don't have the time for that in my opinion and they just don't want to bother with the headache. So if you want a full ATX build, then the 1400KF build. This is a full ATX motherboard, the Elite XAX. Yeah, the memory speed is a little bit slower, but this 100% works at 7,200 CL34. You just plug it in, turn on XMP, call it a day. You don't have to do much tuning at all. Now it's tuning recommended obviously but some people just don't want to go through the hassle of tuning for frequencies they'd rather just focus on tuning the timings on the ram sticks rather than the frequencies so really cool build gpu is not included in this again same principles earlier like a lot of the people that play games nowadays they think they have to upgrade the graphics card for some reason you really don't like the 3080s 3070s 3060s even like they run good frames just every game that you're playing nowadays is mostly cpu bound unless you're playing titles like call of duty where you turn up the settings a little bit yeah i would recommend at least a 4070 super for that game but i mean like on 3090 you'll still get good frames so if you do have like a high-end graphics card that's a 20 series or a 30 series or even a 10 series graphics card if you have a 1080 ti that's still solid dude you can throw it into this you'll be fine like you'll, you'll get 360 fps in most cpu bound games which is going to be like stuff like fortnite valorant like games that you run competitive settings on you don't need a good graphics card for it you just generally don't now would you get amd versus nvidia now that's just up to you for me nvidia is more of you just plug it in you can use a lot of things off of nvidia you can use the encoder perfectly fine you can clip you can install drivers with no problem you can tune the card with no problem all of that is pretty nice on amd side of things you are getting a lower price but there's a cost for that there's not a reason why it costs less the reason it costs less is because the drivers aren't as, as well as good as nvidia's like you might have some problems running in the things and games that are dx11 dx10 dx like those older games or like fortnite performance mode those generally just don't run good on amd without manually tuning the card and make sure it's good amd is more of like you get it just because you're an enthusiast and you know what to do on an amd graphics card and then you just figure out and tune it nobody is more of just like it's for everyone and it should work for everyone without any problem now is the price worth it i'm just here to give you the information on what to get and my opinion so obviously for most of you i just say go nvidia or amd i would say if you only play call of duty and if you don't clip or stream or if you do clip and stream but you don't stream nick twitch or a website that doesn't support av1 then i would get amd but if there you stream to a website that doesn't support av1 and you need a graphics card that streams it to then i would just go nvidia but if you have a dual pc this kind of just removes the need for the encoder completely so yeah but call of duty runs really good on amd graphics card Cards, they do excel in that game however in every other game they just lack it could be the drivers it could be the cars themselves it could be a lot of reasons why but most people say it's just because of the amd drivers i personally was never really a fan of radeon cards i've had one it was an rx 550 or something like that just wasn't my cup of tea and just too many problems especially for the games i was playing but yeah these three pcs are basically what i would recommend nowadays obviously there is some people that would say oh get this motherboard oh get this motherboard guys i mean like th this is just basically the pinnacle of what you should get right now and especially the 7800 x3d build i cannot emphasize this enough if you want cheap fps go with this build there's like the intel ones are great but if you're not an enthusiast and if you're not going to tune the intel builds you're not going to get them optimized either by a person or by yourself then do not go intel just go to the amd route and i'm not like gonna say that uh, intel or amd is better it just depends i haven't really seen any solid tests so far compared to the two but for from what I've seen, if you tune the Intel, in my opinion, you do get the benefit of lower latency. But if you do just want, like you just care about SPS, you just care about a smooth experience in general without tuning much, go the AMD route. There's no point not going the AMD route. And again, if you do decide to go with a different CPU than a 70 Android X3D, just keep in mind, you will have to upgrade that CPU like super soon. The 7700X, the 7600X, a lot of people are going for them just because they're a little bit cheaper and they seem the same. Trust me, the difference is pretty great. The X3D stuff just helps your gameplay a ton and 
adds a lot of FPS. So if you do cheap out on that, just keep in mind, you will have to just spend more money later down the line. I feel like that 7800X3D CPU is going to last for a pretty long time, just like the 5800X3D did, just because AMD did a good job with that. But yeah, I mean, again, as I, I guess I keep saying, just if you are tight on money, don't have a crazy budget like some of these guys do for Intel, just go with this AMD build, plug in your old graphics card or plug in a budget graphics card like a 4070 Super or maybe a used 3080 Ti or a used 3080 for 400 bucks. Plug it into this, boom, you have a build under 1500 that can run 360 frames in most of your games. And you can pair that up with a 360 hertz monitor or a 360 hertz OLED monitor. Those are very expensive, so you are going to be able to spend that money on the OLED, which would help a lot more compared to, the, to what other people might think. Having a good monitor is a big, big, big reason why some people just perform better and they have lower input lag or they seem they have lower input lag, just lower latency on the monitor. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a comment on what are your thoughts on these PC builds. I feel like I've kind of covered most of everyone's questions. However, if you do have any questions, comment down below. I'm really interested. And my advice to most of you, if you're willing to wait for the new CPUs, I would just wait, you know, save your money, get something that's going to last for a pretty long time. Because I mean, these companies, they, they keep making big performance jumps every two to three years. And we're at that kind of mark right now, or they're going to might just do a crazy performance jump and everything. So if it's possible, I would wait. But if you really need a PC, just follow one of these lists and you should be good to go. But it's going to be it for me, guys. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. And if you guys are interested in a PC optimization service for your current system or for your system that you're going to be building soon, then head over to the link in the description and book a PC optimization service directly with me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.